My, my presentation is very uh, quick. I want to show you uh, how that how we can uh, help the documentation guys with contents that you can produce. Okay. So basically, what I will show you is the following. Um, LibreOffice has an extension that you can download, okay, and install into your writer uh, module, okay? This extension is here. It is in this uh, website. It is uh, dev slash uh, dev www.libreoffice.org slash help authoring. There is a small extension, OXT, that you can just click and download and install into your uh, writer, okay? So the result is the following. You have writer, it gives you another menu called help authoring and a new toolbar, okay? Which has specific functions to generate the help files. So what to do? Let's say that you want to explain uh, or create a page of feature XYZ. Then what my recommendation is, is the following. You write it as it is in a page for um, normally in a, in, in a writer document. So a title, feature XYZ, and then after a small description of the feature, and then a section, uh, how to access this function, and then you describe the steps that you need to go through to get to the extension, and then you describe a little bit more about the feature, and you, st and you talk about the parameters that you have to fill into the dialogue if you have a dialogue to fill, okay? Give examples, right? Give examples, and if you have some uh, specific issues to to address, give tips, and give warnings. And at the, in the end, uh, put a, a section on related topics, okay? So write this page, fill the contents, write the best you can to be objective, and then you can try to use the extension to create the help page. So now, this, with this menu, the help authority, you can go and create a new file Right, it opens a new file and immediately you have to um, save it, okay, given a name with the extension already available. So here we are. And in this dialogue, I will jump, I will cancel this dialogue and show you how to proceed, okay? Uh, later on, with more details, we can understand better this dialogue, okay? So I will cancel it and I have this. Um, uh, here. So now I take all my contents that I wrote in the other document, copy, and then paste into this new file. Okay? And oh, oh what happens? It has a very ugly layout. Okay? Why? Because uh, the extension will use the style to generate the proper XML with the parameters. So we have to change the styles, and then with the styles here, you will see a lot of styles, and as a specific set of styles that start with three letters, H, L, P, which are the good styles to use, okay? So this first title here, I will just at, uh, assign head one, and then we have head one. The second paragraph is uh, HLP default, so I use this this um, style. Okay, let me see HLP default, and and successively. Okay, to access this function is a specific uh, feature of the help authoring extension, so I can introduce here, okay, a, an insert here, insert how to get section, and I can take this content, okay, here, control C, control V, 
and we assign the proper style. Okay, the proper style is here, and so on. Okay. And you see some yellow uh, markings. Okay, okay. So then you save this file. <laughs> Leave it there, just put it in. Thank you so much, Olivier. And now we will have Magnus from Thunderbird Project. Yeah, so hello, everybody. I'm Magnus Melin, and I'm, I'm here for Thunderbird. If you don't know it already, uh, Thunderbird is the open source cross-platform email client uh, under the MPL license. Now, I want to tell you where, where we are currently at. Uh, we have a user base of approximately 25 million users. Our user base is growing, though fairly slowly, with the uh, top countries being Germany, uh, Japan, the United States, and France and Italy. Uh, we do major releases every 42 weeks or so. These are the same schedule as Firefox. And uh, we also have the security and stability updates every six weeks to follow the Firefox code because we share probably a, a way over 90% of the code with Firefox. So when they do security updates, we should do them too. Now, uh, organizationally, we are under Mozilla. Our project governance is handled by a group called the Thunderbird uh, Council, started a few years ago. And uh, the problem for us is that Mozilla wants to be laser focused on Firefox, which causes some issues for us. We don't want to be a third wheel. Uh, and we have problems accessing data and stuff. So uh, that's why we are looking for a new organizational home. And uh, so that's where, what, what, why we are here. We are a group of four people who have attended this conference, enjoying it very much so far. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, you can think a little bit about what uh, Thunderbird and TDF might look like together. We believe we have uh, probably fairly similar target customers, people moving, moving away from the Microsoft products. And uh, of course, we share similar open source values. There are potential synergy effects within administration, marketing, probably a lot of other smaller things too. And uh, well, TDF uh, merged from open offices uh, with a great track record. They didn't, you did it, uh, was it? Yeah, how many years ago? Well, anyway, we are facing similar challenges probably when we move to a different home. So we mm, could have a lot of things to learn from you guys. Uh, of course, size does matter. And we believe also there could be uh, increased relevance for both projects uh, if we work together. So there was uh, a lot of uh, mix up with, uh, with the, shall I say, the public relations when Marcella announced that uh, they would be dropping Thunderbird, but we're very much alive still, <laughs> kicking and releasing. And if you didn't do it already, go download us today. Awesome. <laughs> And next is yours. He needs a web browser. He needs a web browser. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just quickly going to try and open a browser here. So this morning, this morning very early, I talked about a website where we can do uh, ODF testing. And um, part, of that, part of that website 
is the ability to actually uh, edit uh, ODF, raw XML ODF, in the browser. And I want to use this lightning talk to quickly give a small demo of how that works and what's underneath it. So this is not about the main part of this testing site, but just about, uh, well, I have ODF and I, I think very few people even have a text editor which helps to autocomplete or validate ODF files in the text editor. If somebody does, does somebody have an autocomplete text editor for ODF? Exactly. Well, one exists and it's in the cloud. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to click make test here. And what you see here, this box is a code mirror instance. Code mirror is a JavaScript library that you can use to have a code editor in your browser. It's used by lots of projects. And they have the ability to do auto completion of XML. What you do need to tell uh, this editor is what elements exist, what attributes exist, what values you might have in your attributes, so, uh, and which elements are allowed in which other elements. So, for example, let's, in this text paragraph, add a, um, add a link. Oh, A is not allowed. Let's just say... I'm a hot yet. Oh, great, thank you. Oh, excellent. I can type with two hands. Um, <laughs> do you want to come stand here? No, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so element text A, great. What attributes do we have? Oh, a whole choice. Let's do href. And, uh, well, let's link to uh, HTTP LibreOffice.org. LibreOffice. Okay, well, great. Oh, apparently this is not valid. That's the second feature we have in here. We have validation of the XML typing. Ac apparently there's something wrong with this A, and that's very simple. We haven't told it what kind of link it is. In ODF, you also have to say it's a simple link. I don't know why, but you do. And now it's valid. So, um, if you want to have a feature where you have autocomplete of ODF in your browser or on your desktop, you can go and look for XML uh, mirror uh, on the web and you co will come to our code repository. That's it. Thank you so much. So next is Bubbly. You need to switch. Okay. USB disk, uh, just down there. Yes. So I'm gonna say a few words about Mali-Rim. It was briefly mentioned. It was briefly mentioned here today during one of the extension talks. It is a Java library which is built around LibreOffice Uno API and it provides some higher abstraction of many Uno interfaces. So if any one of you has ever written some code using Uno in Java, you know why, what I'm talking about when I say that this code is very hard to read and very verbose and it's simply pain in the rear to read and write. So if you, if you don't want to do that, then you probably want to use Noah Libre to, to talk to, to LibreOffice uh, via, you know, uh, from Java. Uh, one of the nice features is that this library allows embedding LibreOffice into your applications uh, with Java AVT, and one of the new features is embedding with SVT, done by my wonderful spouse who's sitting over there. Uh, this is not just some random library, but it's actually used by a couple of free software projects to mention GNU Accounting, which is a free accounting software, or uh, Therapy, which is some um, doctor's ambulance, whatever appointments, uh, management software. Uh, as my colleague sometimes says, like we're, we're not programming with UNO API, but against UNO API. 
So no Alibra is some kind of uh, remedy. So what's new in Noalibre 3.0, which we released earlier this year? Uh, so we adopted that project from Google Code. There were no commits for some six years. And yeah, I can, I can allow me a bit of Java bashing. The project suffered from some common ailment of many Java projects that they were shipping the Uno runtime environment jars in one fat jar. And since the old jars couldn't talk to the new Uno environment jars anymore, uh, we had to somehow ditch them and well, so we don't ship them with Noah anymore But since we don't ship them we have to get them from somewhere and that somewhere is the Maven central repository where uh, Uno runtime environment uh, LibreOffice jars are now uploaded and Once we pull the jars from the Maven central repository. We have to we have to somehow uh, Use them so we have to tell our application where you know on the system is and for that, that was a good exercise in writing your class loader in Java. I will never forget it. Uh, then the new feature I already mentioned that was uh, embedding through Java SVT is now supported because the old uh, SVT, uh, AVT to SVT bridge was kind of ancient and buggy and of course many bug fixes. Uh, there's some work to do in Noalibre. Uh, it is currently using Maven Ant tasks, uh, which is a dead project from Apache to uh, pull uh, the jars from the Maven central repository. So this needs to be replaced by something. It will probably be Apache IV or Maven. Uh, most of the users of the, the simplified UNO you know, interface, most of the usage is in writer. So, so the writer UNO you know, interface like Noa interface is, is the best one, the nicest one. But for example, calc interface would need some love and some, some improvement. And as you can see on the screenshot below, we have a couple of easy hacks too, uh, which is, could be useful for the easy hackers coming to LibreOffice project and wanting to hack on Java. In Java, there's not much work for them to do. So, so this is something where they can put their skills to good use. So if any of this uh, walk any interest, here is where you find Noa Libre, it's on GitHub. So feel free to pull the repository and um, for example, work on some easy hack if you're looking for something nice in Java to do. And we're looking forward some, to some pull requests. And the next is Miklos. Um, as I am opening the slides, the um, talk will be about Clang and everything that's not a plugin, because basically we always identify uh, Clang as, as the compiler that has some plugin interface and Clang equals Clang plugins, but that's not really true. Use the USB disk. Down there. Uh -huh. Great. So, um, in case uh, you just you don't just want to use Clang as a C++ compiler, but actually you want to build on top of that, then uh, Clang has three different interfaces. Um, one is the compiler plugins. Um, we heard a lot about those, so I'm not really talking. As you so, it allows you automatic rewriting. And also, if you have um, some um, extra restrictions uh, on what C++ subset we are supposed to use, then it can guarantee that uh, the, as the code changes, these um, rules are still uh, hold or respected. Um, but actually, it has two different interfaces, and in some situations, it's much better to use this. So um, from the uh, other two, one is uh, lib tooling. That's a part of Clang. And also it have a, has a lib clang. Um, 
Clang itself has a Clang Tools extra repository where it provides a few tools that's built on top of lip tooling, so you can get an idea of what's possible with lip tooling. Um, the first is Clang Applier Replacements. That's um, a tool that can um, basically imp um, read um, a list of changes uh, you did um, in multiple translation units and uh, it, it can deduplicate them and apply on the source code. This is really important because in case you are modifying multiple files, then uh, we are reparsing the headers again and again, and we will do these changes in the headers multiple times, and it's not trivial to deduplicate these changes. In case you deleted a character and the header is, and, and the character was in a header and it was included twice, you want to only remove it once. There is also Clank format that can uh, do stylistic formatting on the, chain, on the code. Uh, there is include fixer that takes a compiler error message, and if it has a database uh, to know what symbol comes from which header, then it can automatically um, insert the header for you. Um, I, I saw this, my, this myself uh, uh, working nicely on the online repo, which is quite uh, smaller. Uh, I'm not sure if it is up to the up to in, in scaling with the core repo. There is also Clang rename that can take a symbol and uh, it can rename um, the variable at every place. In case um, there is some shadowing warning appearing, it's quite non-trivial to fix the warning correctly because you have to know which variable with the same name is which one. Clang rename can do this in a fast and correct way. There is also Clang tidy, um, um, as that's something you can see on the screenshot. Um, it tries to point out a few more stupidity that's actually valid C++ code, but you probably didn't want to do that. And of course, uh, some of these checks are part of the compiler, but in case the analysis for that would be too long, then um, um, Clang Tidy is the place where the Clang developers place these warnings. Um, for example, um, the, the, this not PTR conversion that was done in the core repo previously, um, the, the very same um, conversion can be done with Clunk Tidy as well. I'm not sure which one was implemented first and what are the implementation differences, but the end result is very similar. And this is not a complete list, there are many other tools. Now, uh, based on lip tooling, actually our DevTools repo um, contains uh, two um, example tools. Uh, one can rename files and one can um, analyze um, code and, um, base, and based on that um, issue some output. So in case you, have some, you are working on a class and you see that, um, for example, it has these uh, prefixes that we use quite consistently in some modules, then uh, that can be added in an automatic way. Also, um, we love C++11, except when the auto in the code is somewhere and you have no idea what it is and it wasn't you who wrote the code. Then, for example, using uh, libclang, uh, you can um, uh, deduce the type of that auto and print it out um, either in VIM or Emacs. Thank you for your attention. And the last one is Cisco. Use that uh, USB st disk down there. Yes. Yeah, hello, so I'm Cisco uh, from Q8. So I would like to talk about a couple of topics we covered the other day during the Q8 meeting in the Hackfest. So first one, we discussed how to we could get more contributors to uh, the Q8 team. So <clears throat> we thought about what uh, Jan has done uh, mentoring new uh, developers contributors. So well, one thing we thought is that we can rework the get involved page and just uh, give some easy to follow steps. So without like triaging unconfirmed bugs could be more or less easy. Not always is like that, but could be. And also to retest all bugs because we have some bugs that has been there for quite a while and well, to see if they are already fixed or not. Uh, then another idea we 
we brought to the table is to send a, a welcoming email to newcomers. Well, that's something that uh, we would like to do it not to everyone because sometimes we just have people like opening like well like not informative uh, bugs and but to focus on more on uh, people who is like giving good information or already doing some like triaging uh, at the time they report the bug or they comment the bug so to focus on that people and then uh, well it could be nice if we could use uh, social networks in a way we could also uh, well recruit recruit uh, new people so something like uh, reddit or twitter and then well another thing we could do is uh, to find ways to give uh, uh, well visibility uh, to the work a QA people is doing to so recognize uh, the work they do so they like may feel um, yeah use, useful uh, for the for the project and then <clears throat> another idea we had uh, well uh, right now we have basically uh, the status when a bug it's open it goes to unconfirmed then when someone uh, verifies it, it goes to new, and then from new, like well, a developer can assign it and then fix it, or well, it, there are like other uh, workflows. But we thought that maybe we could add the, a new st status, which is a triage, triage, sorry, and where well, basically uh, we would like to do it. Uh, well, like a bug would be. Uh, set to triage when we have checked we have checked whether it's a duplicated one uh, whether it's a regression uh, we ensure that it has been tested in two operative systems and we set the priority and severity so the idea behind this is that uh, contributors could focus more on uh, triaging bugs and newcomers could uh, focus more on unconfirmed on confirming bugs, but well, just just that's just an idea. So, well, we have to work on that. But yeah, we talk about other things as well. But these two are like um, like big, like well, big topics that we could try and in the QA team. So yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you.